The Suzuki Swift Sport has long been a car embraced by serious drivers who know a great handling hot hatch when they see it. Though not especially powerful, it's agile, chuckable and brilliant fun for not a lot of money. Few potential buyers know this, so the idea with this third generation model is to widen its appeal, with a smarter interior, lower running costs, a little more grunt and even sharper handling. For all that, it'll still be a well-kept secret in this segment, but one loyal buyers will enjoy hugely. I remember when hot hatches weren't all about power. You had a simple, revvy, normally aspirated engine, and there was certainly no need for extra go-faster gadgetry. Four-wheel drive, trick diffs, um, electronic stability systems, double clutch gearboxes, all very nice, but all there to add weight and cost to what should be a simple, inexpensive formula. Now you might think that it's too late to turn the clock back in this segment, but Suzuki doesn't, delivering us this car, the Swift Sport. This is one of the best kept secrets in GTI motoring. Modestly powered perhaps, but modestly weighted too, which means it can routinely put the wind up far more exalted machinery. Around 6,000 or so Swift Sports already pound UK roads, almost all owned by people who wouldn't give any thanks at all for an offer of trade in their car against a pricier, pokier, warmed up Corsa, Fiesta or any other shopping rocket. Here we're going to find out why at the wheel of the third generation version. More efficient, faster and better equipped than any before it. Yet still as much fun to drive? Hell yeah! If you want convincing that power isn't everything in a performance car, then you need to drive this one. Back in the 80s, small affordable hot hatches were characterised by one model. Peugeot's classic 205 GTI. It was a 1.6 litre normally aspirated shopping rocket with a power to weight ratio of 128 brake horsepower per tonne, which is, as it happens, exactly what we have here with this Swift Sport. No coincidence then that few uh, fast super minis since that iconic 205 have been as much fun to drive as this one. Only Renault these days sticks to the lightweight, normally aspirated, track-developed hot hatch formula, and its fast Twingo is smaller and cruder, while its quick Clio is much more expensive and far more powerful. But the appeal of this Suzuki has never had much to do with pure power. After all, the Japanese engineers could easily have simply turbocharged the 134 brake horsepower 1.6 litre unit on offer here and upped its power close to 200 brake horsepower. But that would have simply made the whole package overpriced and uninsurable for the younger buyers the brand wants to attract. So instead, power has rather sensibly been kept on the modest side with a power hike of just 10% over the previous generation version of this car. But thanks to a curb weight that has been kept light at just over a tonne, that's still enough to see you from rest to 60 in this model in uh, 8.7 seconds, on the way to a top speed of 121 miles an hour. So, you may not be winning too many traffic light Grand Prix. No matter, accessing the speed that is on offer is a hoot. Away from rest, this car doesn't feel that fast at all in an era where we used to turbocharged engines delivering all the urge from low down. Here it's different. You have to stir the closely ratioed, slick shifting gearbox into life and really work it. If you're an experienced driver and can steer on the throttle and heel and tow your way through the gear changes, you'll find the car's perfectly set up for that. If you're not then, don't worry, this is a perfect starting point for your first rung on the performance ladder. Everything's predictable and there's a really good set of brakes too. Apparently, uh, the Swift Sport is a favourite choice for novices on the infamous Nürburgring Nordschleifer racetrack. I can see why. As I said, you've got to push this engine a bit to really get the best out of it. Yes, OK, the peak 160 newton metres of torque is delivered a little earlier than with the old model, but you've still got to be up at a buzzy 4,400 revs before you see it and uh, peak power isn't delivered until the heady heights of 7,000 RPM. 
but by that time you might be sporting a very wide grin indeed, especially if you're on your favourite tight twisting back road, an environment in which you'll find very little that can get away from you. Thanks to quick and accurate steering, 20% more responsive than before, a wide track and a short wheelbase, you can confidently throw this car into the tightest corner, whereupon you'll find that it's more agile than ever before. The engineers have achieved this through a more rigid torsion beam suspension setup, as well as stiffer springs and a whole package of detailed tweaks that I won't trouble you with here. You don't need to know how it works, you do need to drive it. But won't such a taut setup make this car an unpleasant highway companion? Well, apparently not. Despite all the stiffening that's gone on underneath, the ride feels to me no worse than any other mildly sporting super mini. And uh, the engine's really quite refined when you're not revving it. Plus, the provision of a six-speed gearbox to replace the old five-speeder makes uh, longer trips actually more relaxing than you might expect from a car of this kind. This car doesn't only show other affordable hot hatches how they should drive. It also, for me, offers a good template on how they should look, potently understated. Sure enough, there's nothing really showy about this Suzuki, with cosmetic changes over the previous generation model that aren't really cosmetic at all, but instead aimed at further sharpening the driving experience by controlling the airflow and suppressing lift. Even so, there's a look assertive enough to suggest that you might be in for a bit of fun behind the wheel. The front end, with its large high intensity discharge headlamps, has been styled to give a lower visual centre of gravity. Finned fog lamp bezels sitting just above a deep front spoiler. Move towards the pertly designed rear of this three door only body shape with its sleeker rear combination lamps and you'll note the way that the car hunkers down over its lovely 17 inch sports alloys. It's an inviting prospect. Inside it's not quite as smart but appropriately it is very driver focused. A trio of overlapping dials in the instrument binnacle sit behind the leather trimmed sports steering wheel, while a tapering centre console draws the eye to the six speed gear lever that marshals the manual transmission. The sports seats offer plenty of lateral support, and the view out is better than with most rivals thanks to the upright seating position and the big glass area. It's true that the standard of fit and finish in the cabin won't have you wondering if you're in an Audi A1 but it's certainly a lot better than the previous version of this car could manage and more than up to the kind of standard you'd expect for the modest price being asked. Now I can't see many buyers bothering to use the rear seats very often in this three door only design but if they are called into use then a couple of adults or at a pinch three children will be perfectly comfortable here certainly uh, since there are headrests that are actually tall enough to support your head and they'll uh, surely be more comfortable than they would be in the tiny pews provided by this car's most direct rivals, the Renault Sport Twingo, the Fiat 500 R Bath and the Mini Cooper. Out back there's 211 litres of space in the boot and uh, you can push the rear seat back forward, it's not 60-40 split folding but it does push forward to reveal 512 litres of space. For some reason that's slightly less than you get in an ordinary three-door Swift Super Mini, but it is significantly more than you get with the comparable rivals that I mentioned earlier. It's nice to be able to report that the Swift Sport is not only one of the most genuine hot hatches out there, but also just about the most affordable. A budget of around £14,000 doesn't buy you much of anything in the modern small car market these days, but it'll get you one of these. The buying proposition here is simple. You get uh, one three-door body style, uh, a single six-speed manual gearbox option, and one decently kitted trim level. As for rivals, well, most of the mainstream brands offer warmed up super mini models, but at this price point, they're normally dearer and more feebly powered. A Vauxhall Corsa 1.4 SRI, for example, with just 100 PS, is a whopping £2,000 pricier than the Swift Sport and not competitive in any way with its riotous chuckability. Ridiculous. 
So instead I've narrowed down three competitors that are um, comparable with this car in terms of character, price and power. Uh, let's start with Renault Sports Twingo 133, which is almost identically quick, but it's cruder, smaller and noisier. Slightly more sophisticated is the uh, Bath version, the hot version of Fiat's 500, which thanks to turbo power is slightly faster than this Suzuki. But uh, it, again, it's a smaller thing um, and a noisier thing that you'd hesitate to take on a longer journey. And it's also about a thousand pound pricier. Better for a longer trip would be something like a Mini Cooper. But again, it's smaller than this Swift Sport and it's pricier. So this car is affordable, something rather pleasingly that hasn't stopped it also being very well equipped. The list price includes 17 inch alloy wheels, front fog lights, auto headlamps with washers, rear privacy glass, uh, sports seats, air conditioning, a six speaker MP3 compatible CD stereo with steering wheel controls and a USB port, uh, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, uh, remote central locking, uh, keyless entry and go. Uh, you've also got a trip computer, metallic paint, uh, power windows, heated electric mirrors, and uh, rather curiously for a hot hatch cruise control. Safety wise, you want a car like this, one that will be driven hard to be decently kitted out, as it is with twin front side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag and Isofix child seat fittings. Plus you get the usual electronic assistance for braking and traction and of course ESP stability control. Now even a car as focused on fun as this Swift Sport can't escape the fact that many buyers look to economy and emissions when drawing up a short list of contenders. So uh, it's good news for Suzuki that the uh, CO2 emissions figure has been trimmed. Uh, from the old model's rather unspectacular 165 grams per kilometre to a more acceptable but still not class leading 147 grams per kilometre. Uh, fuel economy has improved too. It's been eased up from the old model's 39.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle to a more acceptable 44.1 miles to the gallon. And that's enough to get a decent range from the 42 litre fuel tank. Now to give you an idea of how those figures stack up in this part of the market, then you're looking at returns that are slightly better than you get in a Renault Sport Twingo or a Fiat 500R Bath, but slightly worse than you'd manage in a Mini Cooper. But if you bear in mind that uh, all of those cars are slightly smaller models, then you'll get some idea of why I think that Suzuki's achievements here uh, deserve more than a little respect. Now, despite its modest power output, the old Swift Sport was saddled with an insurance group rating of a rather high Group 23, which combined with its relatively high emissions put a cap firmly on its residual values. This one does much better, rated at Group 19 on the 1 to 50 uh, grouping scale. You also get a three year 60,000 mile warranty, a 12 year anti perforation warranty, and a year of Suzuki UK and European wide roadside assistance. Service intervals are every 9,000 miles. Now, like many uh, hot hatch buyers at the affordable end of this sector, I'd forgotten about Suzuki's Swift Sport before I tried this one. Big mistake. Here you get old school GTI fun without old school crudeness. You even get relatively old school pricing. Now you won't be moved to buy this car after looking at the specs in the brochure, but take a test drive down your favorite back road and I guarantee that you'll see this car a whole lot differently. I don't think we should underestimate the scale of this Japanese brand's achievement here. Bringing a hot hatch up to date usually means increasing its weight, price and complexity, none of which has happened here. Leaving this Swift Sport as a car you buy if you've nothing to prove as a driver, but everything to gain from driving it. So please don't change this car, Suzuki. Don't make it faster or more high-tech. It's already the way that every real shopping rocket should be. <laughs>